trout. Maybe speckled trout. I said no doubt. Going fishing today, old Mobile Bay. Going fishing today. I said where we going fishing today? Might be oyster. Welcome to Fishing Time, hosted by Team Lorty, where we show you tips, tools, and rules, hooks, weights, and baits, the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly, and why safety is so important. So hang tight, we got a fishing adventure lined up for today. We have Pier Fishing 101, Pier Fishing 101, and coming up next, everybody stay tuned for more Fishing Time, hosted by Team Lorty. We hope you all enjoy the show. All right, Buzz Beto, what we got going on for today? Boy, I tell you what, Crab Claw, we're going to do us some Pier Fishing 101. Pier Fishing 101, uh, how many times you been Pier Fishing, Buzz Bait? I hate to admit this, but you know, Crab Claw's got me on this. I think I've been Pier Fishing one time in my life. The piers that I normally fish around and buy is in freshwater piers that are real low to the ground. But we're doing some big pier fishing today. Uh, so what kind of baits uh, we going? To, what kind of baits are you recognized with there, Buzz? Bait? What about the old uh, the gotcha plug? The gotcha plug's real effective on fishing big Gulf State piers. It sure is. You catch speckled trout, bluefish, Spanish mackerel. It's a great. It's one of our favorite baits to fish on the field. So we'll definitely start out with that for sure. What we got here. Daiichi, these are the bleeding bait hooks. And I tell you what, Daiichi, Daiichi has got probably the sharpest hooks in the world. What we like to do is change these triple hooks on some of our baits. And you can get these at all your local tackle stores. You can also get them down at our shore shop in Gulf Shores or you can get them at the seafood shop in Orange Beach. That's right, so the bleeding bait hook uh, is a red hook. You know, if you look at the color of it, it's a red hook, you know, which, uh, it catches more fish. I mean, it looks like blood, it looks like gill plates, uh, but we found it most effective uh, that the bleeding bait hook made by Daiichi is our hook of choice, no doubt. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll also have some triple fish fluorocarbon leader line that we're going to use today, Buzz, bait. I tell you what, this is a 25, or it's 30 pound test fluorocarbon leader line. And that is most important out here. Uh, the fish have serious teeth here in the salt water. I do know that. So you always need to have you a good leader line. So what we're going to start out with is uh, we're going to use some piano wire because uh, it's early March, uh, fishing's been slow. Uh, King mackerel are due to show up any day now. So we're gonna try to get the head start uh, on trying to catch some of these King mackerel in early March, 2013. Wow. Very buzz, buddy. I tell you what, buddy, from what I hear, these King mackerel get to be 40, 50 pounds, uh, 50 pounds are chewmongas. But from what I heard, they will stretch you out there a long ways off these piers. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to hook up some of this piano wire because king mackerel have teeth, Spanish mackerel have teeth. Also, here at Pier Fishing, I know it's a good thing to have you a good bait knife. It's always good to have a good bait knife. Also, what Crab Claw has told me they come out with this, it's called a sabiki rig. And a sabiki rig is made daiichi, made by da daiichi. It's a long rig like this. This is gonna be the first time I've ever used one. But it looks to me like it's got two, four, six little baits on it. And what he tells me, you just drop this down off the pier and you catch your live bait. Yeah, we'll try to catch some live bait off the sabiki rig, and we've got a couple little tricks off the sabiki rig as well there, Buzz Bait. I tell you what, it's a joy, you know, to be here, getting crab claws tips on pier fishing. 
because like he told you, I am a, a, a little green on pier fishing, but I am always willing to learn. Well, hopefully we can teach y'all a few tips and tools and uh, on how to catch more fish. Gulf Coast fishing without a boat. You don't always necessarily have to have a boat all the time to catch fish, do you, Buzz Bait? Ah, uh, from what I hear, this pier fishing is something else. And I'm just, you know, blessed to be able to come over here and do some pier fishing. If you ever get a chance and you're down here on the coast and you don't have a boat, you can always catch fish off these piers. So I got the Sabiki rig rigged up. We're good on that one. And then we've got uh, what we'll do with the gotcha plug is is there again we have a little small barrel swivel. It's real small, but it's got loops on both sides, so you can tie your leader line to one side. And then, you know, your spool line goes to the other side. But we're going to use that triple fish fluorocarbon leader line. 30 pound test on a gotcha plug. You don't want to have to, you don't want, you know, we recommend to use uh, on the smaller baits. And we recommend to use probably 30 to 40 to 50 tops on your leader line pound test. But like I said, we've got 30 on this small gotcha plug. Always good to have your needle nose pliers with you because you don't want to use your teeth when you're biting this heavy gauge wire uh, line. Yeah. This line, you know. You know, probably, you know, two foot is a good length on your leader line. You go grab Paul, let me cut you off. Boy, you got your plug. You know, good, like you said, good two foot, ought to be plenty. You gotta be real careful with treble hooks. They got, treble means they got two treble hooks, which they have six hooks. So you always wanna be sure you're pulling the other way. As you can notice, I do know this, being a freshwater fisherman that I am, the bigger the line, the less wraps you have to wrap while you're tying. On this 25 pound test line, I like to do it about five, maybe six times. That's plenty. I'm used to using, you know, 12, 14 for them green trout. I do them about seven to eight times. Put this medium size spoon on. Yeah, I guess he's probably what three quarters of a pound, maybe an ounce. Yeah, it's always good to have a few different baits out here, pure fishing. From what Crab Call tells me, there's all kind of different species of fish that swim around these piers. You always want to make sure you have a few lures to throw at. Thank you, sir. Oh. What in the world you got there, Crab Claw? <clears throat> well, Buzz Bait, uh, when we catch one of these big king mackerel out here, schooling around, we got our big pier net available. 
That is, it looks like a big scoop net. Yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, it's got a, probably about a 30, 40 foot line, you know, fishing on this pier. I don't know the exact numbers uh, on how uh, deep uh, the pier is compared to the water, uh, but I, it's, I would imagine it's gonna be probably 30, I'd say 20 to 30 foot anyway. Without a doubt. But we'll find out, because we got our line color coded, and we'll find out exactly how uh, how deep uh, it is. Wow. The water. wow. <laughs> so everybody just hang tight. Uh, more fishing time coming your, right your way. Where the seafood's fresh. Where the gumbo's hot. You pick it. We steam it. Hot on the spine. Either original or spicy hot. At the seafood shop. That's right, the seafood shop. 230 43 Perdido Beach Boulevard, Orange Beach, Alabama. We hope to see y'all soon. Where we appreciate your business. Uh oh, so uh, we finally made it to the pier, huh, Buzz Bait? We sure did. Tell you what, buddy. This is a whole lot different than the freshwater fishing that I'm accustomed to. But you know, you come out here on a pier, it's totally different than freshwater fishing for sure. You know, crab claws got a lot of techniques. We got all these poles rigged up. It is the first of March. I say, what, it's March 9th. Yeah, so the bait fish really hadn't showed up just yet. Uh, but what we're gonna try to do today is uh, give you all a few techniques. Uh, what Buzz Bait's trying to do right now is he has a sabiki rig. I don't think the bait fish has showed up yet, uh, but the sabiki rig is very, very effective on catching, uh, you know, these LYs and hardtails around these pylons on the pier. And what he's doing is uh, he's just trying to work the pier columns. I will say, working these pier columns, the first drop over here just a few seconds ago. Sabiki rig got hooked up to the, <laughs> to the, to the pylon. We lost Sabiki rig. <laughs> yeah, on, the, on the first drop of the day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with them because they, like, like Buzz Bay was saying, they probably have about, uh, what, what eight, eight, at least eight hooks on they it. They got six to eight hooks. They're real small. They're real sharp. The way, as I can see, you know, I am a greenhorn here on pier fishing, but as I can tell, the current does move around these piers. And what I did is I dropped the sabiki rig over and the current took it up against the piling and it got stuck and I lost sabiki rig. But as you can see, this is this is the way you do it. Got it on light line. You can put it on heavy line. When the bait fish are here, from what Crab Claw tells me, you can, they're everywhere. Well, usually you can see them as well, you know. I mean, you can see them schooling around the pylons and you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much all you can catch uh, uh, live bait, you know, off that sabiki rig. But, you know, the technique, he's just trying to, you know, work it up and down, work it up and down, and uh, and trying to work the columns. That's right. So that's a good technique on catching your live bait. If, if you come to a pier and you do not have live bait with you, you can use these sabiki rigs made by Daiichi and uh, catch plenty, plenty of live bait. Yeah, and a little tip too, you know, is you can get a piece of squid, you know, or a little piece of shrimp, or a little piece of cut bait, you know, to add those small hooks on that sabiki rig. Show them what that sabiki rig looks like there, Captain. You can always uh, add a little more game to your plan on trying to catch some of this live bait. But as you can see, 
It's got to be what close to one, two. two, four, six. There's six little sabiki. They they look like flies to me. And what it is, the little bait fish just love to eat on that. Yeah, they really do. And uh, as you can see, you know, they're real, real, real small hooks. So you're trying to catch real, real, real small bait. And uh, there again, you know, to trick that bait up a little bit. You know, a little piece of cut bait, a little piece of squid on that, uh, put a little stink on it, and uh, it's also very effective on catching these live bait on pier fishing. 101. There you go. Crab Claw has got lots of tricks up his sleeves for pier fishing, so y'all just stay tuned. We're just now getting started. And ideally, you know, you would like to have, you know, especially if you got, you know, uh, you and your partner, you know, one, one guy needs to spend a lot of time just trying to catch live bait. You know, while the other guy gets rigged up and trying to, you know, he might use a cigar minnows, you know, for the king mackerel, you know, maybe small pieces of shrimp, you know, for the whiting. Uh, but ideally, you know, you get a fishing partner together and one guy's going to really spend a lot of time just trying to catch bait, you know, because fresh bait, you know, fresh caught is uh, always more effective uh, than a frozen bait, even though frozen bait will work as well. But, you know, live bait is, uh, it'll keep them coming. All right, so that's a little technique on the sabiki rig. And there again, that thing is very, very dangerous because uh, they got all those small hooks, so you have to pay close attention on, on, on hooking them back, boys. Yeah, and, and I recommend whenever you bring it back in and you want them to put it up and secure it, try to keep it all tangle-free because Lord knows there's six hooks there and they will tangle up in a hurry. Yeah, they will. <laughs> I just experienced that part of the pier fishing 101. 101. Uh, watch out for your sabiki rigs uh, because the sabiki rig is a very dangerous rig, but there again, it's very, very effective on catching live bait. But here we are, uh, gold fishing out here uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Trying to catch some fish here, Buzz Bait. Yeah. So, what technique are you going to use now? Now, what we got here. We have a decent sized pole. Like it's got about 25 pound test line on it. What we did, this is one of the rigs that we rigged up. We got the spoon with the bleeding blood bait. Daiichi hook. Daiichi hook. And what that does, that just represents some kind of bait fish. When you, and, and this thing will cast way out there. We got it on a big pole. So this pole, big enough to catch, you know, up to a 30, 40 pound fish. So, uh, you just simply, you grab that bad boy like that. You always wanna make sure there's nobody around when you're on a pier because these hooks right here will will get you. Yeah, they will. You well, always they gotta pay attention to your surroundings. You can grab this bad boy like this, you see, and you can let her go as far as she'll go. And my goodness, son, <laughs> Out there a good she, 50 yards. She's out there a good 50. And you know, really, you know, when you're fishing these fish on the pier, you want to use a, a longer pole, you know, in order to get your bait out there as far as you can so you can keep your, your bait in the water as long as you can. Yeah, as, as Grandpa was, was mentioning, you know, this is a very short pole. It's a stout pole. It's probably seven foot. Six and a half. I'm, I'm saying it's seven. That's seven foot pole. But ideally, when you want to really reach out there and touch somebody, you always got to have your big nine, ten foot pole here on piers. You never know what you're going to catch on a on, on a big pier such as this. Yeah, because I mean, there again, you know, the longer the pole, the more distance you're going to get out of the performance on your bait, and you know, the longer your bait's in the water, the better chances you got catching one of them big fish. You just, you know, you work it. Yeah, I mean, I guess what, how, I, this has got to be what, 30 foot, maybe more than that. Down to the water level, it's every bit of 25, probably 30 foot. Uh, this is one of them showing of big piers. Big pier. You know, there's several, several piers here on the coast that require, you know, different, not necessarily different techniques, but, you, you know, you don't have to have a 30-foot hoop net on some of these smaller piers around. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you, you know, you, you'll catch pompano and whiting uh, where you necessarily don't have to use your pier net. 
Uh, but there again, uh, we do have the pier net available uh, for the big bite of the day. But there again, you know, he's got the pole overboard. He's working it, you know, on the other side down. There's a little bit of work uh, in, in casting these poles. There he is. Now, if you want to come out here and cast with this artificial lures, you need to be prepared to get you a good night's sleep. Because <laughs> you'll be, be wore out. Because you will be wore out now. You know, like, like Crab Claw was saying, you can use dead bait. You can use live bait. You throw it out there and you tighten your line up. And, you know, that's a technique of, of fishing piers as well. There's several different ones. Crab Claw knows just several techniques on catching fish off piers. And I'm learning. Hopefully, y'all will learn off this video and y'all learn how to catch more fish off piers here on the coast. We call it coast fishing without a boat. That's right. You can still catch fish without a boat. Let's try this one more time. Lord knows we've uh, spent our time uh, uh, fishing on the bank, haven't we, Captain? Ooh, I tell you what, buddy. <laughs> Spent a lot of times without a boat. I love to fish, so you don't necessarily have to have a boat to catch fish, and this pier fishing is outstanding. It can be outstanding. It can be outstanding. You know, right now I think like you know, I think it's the first of March in uh, uh, 2013 and uh the bait fish hadn't showed up yet. Um we did see a, a, a bunch of whiting old boys caught. They said they they just turned off. They turned on and turned off. You know, it's kind of funny. I mean, why do you think fish turn on and turn off? Well, what they do, you know, the fish, this is just like freshwater fish, and the fish feed at some time during the day. I mean, they, they have a time. They're just like humans. They have to eat. And the tides and the wind, and there's several different factors the, what I'm told fishing off these piers that come into play, you know, the wind changes, stuff, you know. You know, bait fish thing. shows up, bait fish leaves, they, they come and they go, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's like kind of like, well, when's the dinner bell going to, you know, tick off, you know? Because you know they got a dinner bell just like we got a dinner bell. But usually on a pier, especially when you're this high up, you can actually see the fish. Uh, right now we've got a north wind uh, coming out of the north, I guess about maybe what, 12 to 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Which the water's clear. I mean, we just saw uh, a bunch of rays. We're not real sure what, exactly what ray it was, uh, what kind of rays, but they... They were big. It was beautiful. You know, the rays, the rays come in. They're, they're definitely uh, fishing themselves. Uh, that's a good sign. As this water warms up more and more here on the coast, the more fish, they get more active, more fish come in, they get closer. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, you know, the fish spawning, you know, in springtime. I don't know where they go in the wintertime. It's so funny, you know, you, you think maybe they die off or I don't know if they go in hibernation, uh, but it's just real funny, you know, how bait fish will just be everywhere and then, you know, come, you know, Winter time, late winter, early spring, you know, bait fish, they just had not showed up yet, you know? Go on, Crab Claw, what in the world we got rigged up here, man? Well, I'll tell you what, this is a rig that, uh, that's very effective on catching king mackerel uh, here on the pier. And what we got, we got rigged up, uh, I guess we got about a half ounce uh, football weight with a clear bead, which will keep uh, the line from fraying. And then we also have a barrel swivel, and then we have uh, some piano wire hooked up to a one of uh, Daiichi bleeding bait hook with a cigar man at the end. From what I heard, you catch big king mackerel with something like this. That's, that's the, probably the number one uh, king mackerel pier fishing uh, bait that there is uh, on fishing piers and, you know, fishing whether you're in a boat or on the pier. And what it is is what we'll do is we have just a little bit of a weight on there uh, about a half ounce and what we'll do is we'll we'll cast it out there and we want that one to be kind of you know submerged a little bit you know we're, we're trying to fish the top column of the water because uh, that's where these uh, redfish and, and, and these big king mackerel school and you'll catch uh, Spanish mackerel off them as well uh, but you know there again you know you can't just sling this bait out there because uh, cigar men uh, you gotta give it a little bit of tender love and care when you uh, slap that 10 foot rod and reel combo uh, on trying to get that bad boy out of there. So.
and it's kind of like a Carolina rig, you know, probably got about three foot of a leader line on there, and and we'll use, a lot of times, we'll use no weight at all. I mean, we'll just free line it, let the wind, let the current, you know, kind of just make it work on top. Uh, but there again, if the current's moving too much or, or it's really not sitting as right, you know, where you think it needs to sit, you know, add a little, you know, a little football weight on there. And it's a bait that you'll let sit. I mean, you really don't really work it, uh, you know, like you would an artificial bait. You know, you'll throw it out there and, and, and let her sit and just kind of hang out. As I can notice, when I throw that out, it seems to me like today the tide is coming from the east, moving to the west. So what I've done is I'm fishing on the east side of the pier. And, you know, when you observe a situation like that, the fisherman that I am, I would probably think that it would be better to fish off of the west side of the pier in a situation like this because the current's moving to the west. But, you know, also that wind's coming out of the west, so the current, it, it seems like the current is uh, uh, moving uh, out of the east, but it seems like the we, uh, we got a southwest wind. It does seem that way, but as you can see, I threw this thing out there a good, you know, 30, 40 yards because I had to lightly throw it out, but you can see how it's moving back this way, so the tide is definitely moving towards the west, east to west. So, Absolutely. that's just something to observe when you're pier fishing. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's flag it on the other side and uh, see what, we'll see what happens. trickier into the wind. Trickier in the wind, but as, as you can tell, <clears throat> from what I observed on that side, the bait was coming to me, so. Hopefully the bait goes away from it. The bait is gonna be drifting out that way, and that's what Crab Claw was, was talking. When you let your bait drift with no, no weight, you want it to drift with the tide. You, you don't want, want to fight it and let it bring it back to you. You want it to let it go out, and that's why a lot of times, he was talking about using corks as identification markers. But when that bad boy drifts on out there a good hundred yards, you really need to know where your your bait is. Yeah, and then you know there again, you know the, the further out the bait, you know the the more the more you're working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely working. Uh, he's uh, Buzzbait definitely observed that uh, the bait is uh, at least it's not moving towards the pier. It's it's, it's stationary outside. That's right. So observe, you know, uh, one side uh, might work a little better, and one might work a little less. We finally made it to the end there, Buzzbait. We made it to the end of this humongous pier. We just saw a boy, he, he said he hooked up to a big shark. So I'll tell you what. It didn't take us long to slip over here though, did it? No, sir. We'll take a shark too, won't we, Captain? Take, take a pole, Ben. Let that bad boy sit. Sharks like sick all minus too, Captain. Anything. <laughs> anything. Now, I was told out here on this pier, this is the deepest part of this huge pier. Yeah, it's probably, I would say it's probably 30 foot deep. You see a little loop in my spool I'm trying to get to, to get that out. Yeah, the wind's blowing and you always got to constantly trying to keep them loops out of your out of your reel.
put her out there that time, Crab Claw. Yeah, I tell you, it's uh, got to be a little bit slower that 10 foot combo, you know. Got that big mega spoon out there working. Uh, you'll be surprised that mega spoon can sniff up some fish. Of course, it seems like it's been real slow though, you know. Yeah. A little early, a little early. Uh, we got some over here. We got fish. We got fish. Right there, ain't it? The sheephead might go seven, eight pounds, huh? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You Probably. think? Yeah, they're a lot heavier than you think. I was surprised one time when a guy asked me what to eat. I Fishing with live shrimp? Uh-huh. Good job, Dad. Good with the hoop net there, Captain. Seems like they're having better luck over there, Kim. What'd they catch, Crab Claw? Man, they call them a billy goat fish. Billy goat? Now, what's a billy goat fish? It's a sheephead. Sheephead? Wow. I've heard of sheephead. They tell me they got, like, horse teeth. Yeah, they do. It's, uh, I don't know how they floss them, but uh, it sure looks like human teeth. <laughs> they tell me that them sheephead like to eat the barnacles and stuff off the pilings, off of beers. I think that's a true story. Is that what it is? And I also heard that some people will actually, when they get around the pier, and if they're in a boat or they're just low down by the column, they'll take some type of snag hook. Snag hook, or they will use some type of like shovel and scrape the barnacles off the pilings to attract these sheephead, better known as billy goat fish. Yeah, it happens to chum the water up. You get that old flathead shovel and run them down that pile and break them barnacles up and they'll be coming running. Wow. They also tell me sheephead's good to eat. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite fish, no doubt. Redfish. I said a black fish. Catfish. Make it white trout, green trout, speckled trout. I said, no doubt. 